We're here to announce the Persian Jewish Genetic Screening Program at Cedar sinai Medical Center uh, involving Dr. David Ramoyne, Dr. Michael Kaback, and our genetic counselor, uh, Catherine Quindipan. Now, what is ethnogenetics? That is a term we use for different ethnic groups because each ethnic group has a number of genetic diseases which are more prevalent among them than among other populations. We should take advantage of these ethnic disorders when effective interventions become available for them and when we are able to screen the particular population for at-risk couples or affected individuals before they develop symptoms. Although it is often considered to be politically correct to ignore ethnic diversity, <clears throat> we should take advantage of these facts and celebrate our differences. All populations have their own specific disorders that increase frequency. For example, sickle cell anemia is found in African Americans, thalassemia in Southeast Asians, cystic fibrosis in Northern Europeans, congenital nephrosis in Finns, Tay-Sachs disease in Ashkenazi Jews, familial for Mediterranean fever in Sephardic Jews, and for example, hereditary inclusion body myopathy in Persian Jews. Now why did these arise in Persian Jews? Well, if you go back in history to ancient Babylon in 586 BCE, Palestine was conquered by King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon, and a number of Jews were brought from uh, Palestine to the Babylonian Empire. In 539 BCE, Babylon was conquered by King Cyrus of Persia, and they remained in the Persian Empire since that time. And here is modern Iran, which you all know, of course, uh, in the 1970s, the Islamic Revolution in Iran led to these borders and to uh, the, the exodus of many of the Persian Jews to either Israel, or California, and some to New York area. Now, these diseases that we're going to talk about are, quote, autosomal recessive disorders. That is, some genetic disorders occur when both copies of the same gene have mutations, and thus there is no working copy of the gene. And this is what it looks like. You have unaffected carrier fathers and unaffected carrier mothers. We're all carrying something or other, but when the father and mother carry one of the same mutant genes, then there's a chance for uh, these to be transmitted to their offspring. So there is a one in four chance of both affected genes going to a, an individual who will be affected. Two out of four chance that the individual effect will inherit one mutant gene and one normal gene and therefore be unaffected just like the parents but carriers of the trait. And there's a one in four chance of both normal genes going to the child and therefore being unaffected. Now let me tell you about Tay-Sachs disease in North America which Dr. Kaback's Tay-Sachs disease prevention program has almost eliminated from the Jewish community. Tay-Sachs disease is found primarily in Ashkenazi Jews and in the early 70s when this program was started there were over 50 cases born per year in North America to Ashkenazi Jews and about 10 to 15 cases born to non-Jews. Through the use of the Tay-Sachs program this is almost undiscovered now in Ashkenazi Jews in the US and actually throughout the world and only occasional cases are found whereas the frequency is just the same in non-Jewish individuals. So this prevention program has in essence eliminated Tay-Sachs disease from the Ashkenazi Jewish community. Now what are Persian Jewish genetic disorders and how can we deal with them? Well there are four diseases that we're concentrating on. One is called pseudocolonesterase deficiency which we will call anesthesia sensitivity disorder. The second is congenital hypoaldosteronism, a salt losing disorder. The third is polyglandular deficiency, that is multiple hormone deficiency. And the fourth is hereditary inclusion body myopathy, a hereditary muscle disorder. All four autosomal recessive disorders and each the result of a single mutation in the Persian Jewish population. Due to recent advances in human genetics, it is now possible for these disorders to be diagnosed, treated, prevented, or avoided. Now let's look at each of these diseases individually. The anesthesia sensitivity disorder, one in ten individuals of Persian Jewish ancestry are carriers. Therefore, one in ten times one in ten, or one in a hundred Persian Jewish couples, are at risk of having an affected child. And since each of their children has a one in four risk of being affected, that means that one in four hundred Persian Jews are affected. Now what does it mean to be affected? Most individuals do not know they are affected, 
until they are exposed to certain anesthetic drugs. Exposure to these drugs can cause difficulty breathing or muscle weakness, and complications after general or spinal anesthesia can be avoided by the selection of appropriate drugs. Succinylcholine and specific local anesthetics such as Novocaine should be avoided, and if they are avoided, an affected individual will never know that they carry these conditions. Congenital hypoaldosteronism is a salt losing disorder. One in 30 individuals of Persian Jewish ancestry are carriers, and thus one in 900 Persian Jewish couples are at risk of having an affected child. There's a wide spectrum of symptoms in people with this condition. The severe form results in critical dehydration and shock in the newborn, and if untreated, the infant might die. The less severe form results in poor weight gain, short stature, blood pressure irregularity, weakness, dizziness, or excessive salt craving. And normal lifespan and development is expected with simple and inexpensive therapy. In polyglandular deficiency, we have multiple hormone deficiencies. One in 50 individuals of Persian Jewish ancestry are carriers, and therefore one in 2,500 Persian Jewish couples are at risk of having an affected child. This condition may have different symptoms depending on which endocrine gland is affected. One can have skin infections, muscle weakness, loss of appetite, hair loss, anxiety, tingling of the lips or fingers, hair loss, twitchings of spasms of the muscles, fatigue, nausea, vomiting, infertility, depression. Most individuals just have one or a few of these symptoms if they have this depending on which glands are affected. And the affected individuals do not experience every symptom and it's treatable clearly with hormone replacement therapy. Thus, if you know you're going to develop this condition, you can watch for each hormone uh, with age and treat it before it causes any problems. Now, the, probably the most uh, well-known to the current Jewish uh, Persian community here is hereditary inclusion body myopathy, or HIBM, the hereditary muscle disorder. One in 20 individuals of Persian Jewish ancestry are carriers, and one in 400 Persian Jewish couples are at risk for having an affected child. This condition is characterized by progressive muscle weakness of the arms and legs. The symptoms usually occur between the 20s and 30s with difficulty walking, and the progression of this disease is gradual, leading to people being fully wheelchair bound. Most affected individuals become severely debilitated a decade after symptoms begin, and they lose their ability to walk. Now what can we do about this? Well, we can't treat or cure it yet, but prenatal diagnosis early in pregnancy by CVS or amniocentesis or in vitro fertilization with pre-implantation genetic diagnosis uh, can be offered to couples, both of whom are carriers of this condition. Thus, they can have as many unaffected children as they like without having to take the chance of having an affected child. Now, genetic testing is available for mutations causing these four disorders, which are more common in the Persian Jewish population. It allows a couple to know if they are at risk for having an affected child or actually have the condition. If a risk is identified, each of these disorders can be avoided, treated, or prevented. Now, Cedar sinai has started this program for all Persian Jews in the Los Angeles area for these four conditions. And the test will be done on saliva samples. That is, all you have to do is to spit in a tube and we can look at the DNA in your saliva. This will be strictly confidential. Only the tested individual or their parents will be informed about the results and counseled accordingly. And we will be sure to make this strictly confidential. Not even the lab personnel will know whose saliva is being tested. We hope to screen as many of the Persian Jewish community in Los Angeles as possible to identify carriers of the disorders so that family planning and prevention can be individually accomplished. And affected individuals carrying both copies of the mutant gene can be identified and treated or the offending anesthetic agent avoided. This program can then be extended to other Persian Jewish communities in the U.S. and Israel, as well as serve as a model for similar screening programs in other ethnic groups internationally. And we would like to thank uh, the Jewish Community Foundation of Los Angeles for their support of this program. Thank you very much.